So what's the alternative to active surveillance? Well, radical prostatectomy. I'm a surgeon. Um, I think surgery is the best, although other people disagree, perhaps. And we can do this through a sort of 10 centimetre cut. You can do it with chopsticks with the laparoscope. Or you can do it with this sexy new object called the robot, which is great fun. Uh, and it's, it's a very good bit of kit. It's just extremely expensive. Um, the advantage of doing, taking the whole prostate out is that the PSA level drops to zero because you haven't got a prostate, you're not making PSA. And when you get that blood test result saying PSA zero, it's extremely reassuring. And you can follow up people by watching just their PSA. And when I asked a 1,000 men who'd had their prostates taken out, why did you choose to have your prostate taken out rather than anything else? The overwhelming answer was, I want to know it's gone. Just don't, I don't want to sit in it for the rest of my life. I just want to know it's gone. But it is major surgery, and there is an incontinence rate. Most men are incontinent to start with. That means when they cough, laugh, or sneeze, they leak a bit of urine. That does get better, and by six months to a year, about 95% are completely pad-free. They're, they're pretty much totally continent. But 50% of men will lose their erections as a result of damage to the nerves that supply the penis. Well, what are the alternatives? Radiotherapy. This involves going to Guildford if you're diagnosed at Fumley and lying on this machine here for between five and seven weeks uh, for half an hour a day, Monday to Friday. It's non-invasive, you know, there's no cuts, so it doesn't hurt you. But you may need to, you're likely to have hormonal treatment as well, and this has side effects. It, it gives you hot sweats, it, can, um, reduce your, it will reduce your sex drive, your erections again. It can change your mood. You will likely to get erectile dysfunction. Again, the similar sort of figures to an operation. There's a small risk of rectal or bladder damage. You can see here is the, uh, an MRI scan. This is the prostate. You probably can't see that at the back. But the radiotherapy field includes a little bit of the rectum. So if you're, if you're blasting in the rectum with um, radioactivity, you will get rectal side effects. So you will pass blood mucus and have a bit of loose stool and frequency of stool. And there is a small risk, albeit small risk, of developing a secondary cancer as a result of that radiotherapy in your rectum years down the line. So we now uh, look in people's rectums after five years after they've had radiotherapy and every five years <coughs> thereafter. What about brachytherapy? Well this is a less invasive and, and a neater way of giving radiotherapy than the external beam uh, way. It's not suitable for everybody but for some people what uh, we do is scan the prostate and then tailor make where we put the seeds <coughs> according to your prostate shape and size. And what we do then is, under general anaesthetic, implant uh, between 100 and 120 little seeds which are radioactive into the prostate. They dissipate their uh, radioactivity over a period of time, and that kills the prostate cancer. But as you can imagine, if you're radiating the urethra, which runs bang through the middle, you will get waterwork problems. You, it hurts to pee, you're peeing frequently, um, and you may fail to pee altogether and need to have a catheter. Again, there are a few rectal problems with that, and again, erection problems, although they tend to creep up uh, more slowly. So here's our dilemma. We have treatments which are very effective, but they do have side effects. And we have a disease that may cause no harm that doesn't need treating in the first place. So what is the future? The robot is the present, so I don't count the robot as the future. This is that same bit of prostate, bottom side up. <laughs> um, this is a bit of prostate, this is the back, this is the water pipe running through the middle, and this is a prostate cancer. The question is, the nerves sit here and here, the sphincter muscle that keeps you dry, keeps you constant, sits at the very tip of the prostate, at the bottom end. The rectum is right here, very close, and the bladder obviously sits on top of the prostate. The question is, do we need to treat that like that, by taking the whole prostate out, irradiating the whole prostate, or could we just do that? Save the nerve on this side, save the sphincter on this side, and leave half the prostate intact. Or could we even do that? Leave the nerve even on this side to preserve the, the erection, leave the sphincter, you're miles away from the sphincter muscle, and you're away from the bladder and the rectum. This is the argument the breast surgeons had 20 years ago. And if you uh, talk to the breast surgeons who were around 20 years ago who were advocating taking a little bit of the breast away, a lumpectomy, they were told they were, they were criminals for doing it. 
And if you stand up in a meeting in, in urology now and say focal therapy at least a year or two ago, you're told you're a criminal. The prostate's got to come out. But this, I think, is the future. And the neatest way currently to do this, and there's no fixed way of actually treating focally, but it's with this HIFU, which is focused ultrasound. Now, what ultrasound, many of you will be familiar with, it's used for baby scans, it's used to scan the abdomen, and those ultrasound waves are coming in parallel. And rather like the sun's rays, if the sun's rays come and hit you, that's fine. You may get a bit pink, but it's not the end of the world. If you put a magnifying glass in front of the sun, the rays are focused to a small point, and you can burn a hole in a bit of paper. And this is exactly what HIFU is. It's a high-intensity, focused ultrasound scan. So the ultrasound scan waves are directed to a focus, and that results in heating. And you put a probe up the backside and heat the prostate sequentially in areas the size of about a rice grain. And you can treat whichever bits you like. You do it in real time as you're watching what you're doing on ultrasound. And you can either treat the whole prostate, or you can treat little bits of it where you think the cancer is. So here's an MRI scan. This is the prostate here. This is the rectum here. Hip joints here. This is the front. This is the back. And here's a cancer <coughs> sitting here. And he underwent HIFU to destroy that half of the prostate. And there's a big black hole. That's where his cancer was. And there's no way there's cancer there now because it's a big black hole. And this is a study that's mainly been driven out of University College London, uh, but also we've been, doing, we've been doing some, uh, my patients have gone down to Mr. Hindi down at, at Basingstoke, and some of them may do it firmly in the near future, is uh, treating men with focal therapy. And so far, 83 men have been treated as part of a proper national trial. And we've been treating half or part of the prostate. And we haven't been here very long, so only 20 men have reached six months follow-up. So in terms of their cancer outcome, this is a short time. But initially, we weren't doing template biopsies on them. We were doing truss biopsies on them, an MRI scan. But now we're doing template biopsies on everybody. And we've had 18 patients who are completely free of their disease now. <coughs> Two have tiny little bits. One opted for retreatment. The advantage of this is you can just wheel them back to your operating theatre and retreat an area if you need to. And one has got a tiny bit of cancer. We've told him he doesn't need to worry about it. He's sitting tight. No patient has had any incontinence at all. And all but one is potent as of as soon as they leave hospital. So these results are really dramatic in terms of preserving the quality of patients' lives. Now people complain of different things, understandably. The demand gets higher. The, the stakes get higher. People say they want to be able to ejaculate and they can't often ejaculate after this. So now they've got their erections, but they now have want to ejaculate. So these are ongoing. The bar gets higher as we get better. We're just trying to chase your demands all the time. What other things can we do? This is, this is a patient we treated at um, firmly recently. He's in the audience. I won't point him out. But um, this, is, this was his prostate before we treated him. We treated him with what's called PDT, which is photodynamic therapy. And this is very much in its sort of experimental phase. And what you do is you find out by template biopsies exactly where the prostate cancer is. And in his case, it was down here. Same as the last chap. And what you do is insert laser fibers just into that area there while the patient's asleep. You then give them a very special chemical that is only active if you turn a bright light onto it. So you inject the chemical into a vein. The chemical goes all around the body, including to the prostate. And then after 10 minutes, we turn our lasers on. And the lasers light up that bit of the prostate you want to treat, but nothing else. The rest of the patient is covered, completely covered. And what it does, it basically initiates a heart attack in that area that light is shone on. So the blood vessels block off, and that part of the prostate dies. The patient needs to stay in the dark for six hours to let the drug come out of the system. If you shine a bright light on them, you'll burn them. <laughs> um, so they stay in the dark for about six hours. And this is the MRI scan one week after treatment. And where that cancer was, there's a big black hole. There isn't cancer there anymore. And this patient. I think he would agree, we probably could have gone home the next day. Um, and um, really, it was, although this is really early days in this treatment, it really was minimal morbidity. There was li very little in the way of untoward, unpleasant side effects. That's news in progress, so I won't draw any dramatic conclusions. The Americans are trying cryotherapy, which involves putting 
probed into the prostate and then freezing them by putting liquid argon in there. Um, it's not very precise. You can't say exactly where your ice is going to go, unlike the high food, which is much more precise. And the results are less promising, although they're still much better than surgery and radiotherapy. And this is where perhaps the future will go if you live near Guildford. And this is with focal brachytherapy. This has never been done. This is a complete mock-up. But if you imagine we had a tumour here and perhaps a tumour here, what we could do is plant some radioactive seeds in just that area and just that area and create two little mushroom clouds in the area that you want to treat. And that would just destroy the cancer and leave you with your erections, <coughs> your sphincter to keep you dry, your rectum and your bladder all intact. So just to conclude, we have a number of dilemmas in prostate cancer. It's a common cancer, but not everybody dies from it. We have an imperfect test in the PSA. There are a number of issues still outstanding about screening, but I hope I've given you a sensible possibility at least. And we have problems of overdiagnosis in prostate cancer. What we should do is do this tailored screening. We should do template biopsies for the time being. I accept they're not the be on end all forever because sticking 50 needles into somebody's perineum there is, can be a little uncomfortable, but when, until bio, uh, MRI and other imaging gets better, this is the best we have. And I think focal treatment will be the future treatment for many men, but not all men, with prostate cancer. Thank you very much.